Hi there, welcome. In this video, I will show you how to convert touchstone files to ADS dataset files. I'll begin by converting one touchstone file to an ADS dataset file, and then I'll show you how to iterate through a directory and convert multiple touchstone files to multiple ADS dataset files. Now, it's also possible to convert multiple touchstone files into a single ADS dataset file. However, I'm not going to cover that today, but just be aware that is possible. So in this workspace that I'm using to demonstrate, I have several touchstone files, an S4P, an S2P, an S10P, and an S20P. I'm going to convert all of those eventually to their own ADS dataset files. You can also see there are already dataset files in this data directory, I want to leave those untouched. And so I wanted to demonstrate how to skip over dataset files uh, as you're iterating through a directory. And so that's why there are already ADS dataset files in this, because I wanted to demonstrate that. So to begin, let me start by opening up the data display window and go to Tools Spider. So Spider is a Python integrated development environment that is included with the ADS Python data link. And it's a great environment to use while you're developing your Python scripts. And so the first thing I'm going to do is establish and define a variable for my data folder. And so I like to do this programmatically uh, so that it'll work on any computer. So if I send this script to another colleague, it'll work on their computer. So I don't want to hard code any of the paths. And so the way to do that, well, one of the ways to do that is to use the pathlib library in Python. So I'm going to import from the pathlib library this object called a path. And this lets me define uh, paths programmatically and do um, some special things like iterate over uh, items in a directory. And so I want to find the data folder, which is where um, the touchstone files are located. So this script is actually located in a subdirectory inside of the data folder. So by default, Python scripts go into a Python subfolder within your data directory. And so I want to define a variable for the data folder location. So the data folder equals path. So I'm going to define a path object. And one of the tricks I use all the time is this double underscore file, double underscore variable. This is a reserved variable in Python that allows you to find the location of whatever script that you're running. So this double underscore file double underscore that returns the full path to this script that I'm going to run. And so if I uh, if I just run this right, if I just run this, if I look at my data folder variable, you can see it's the full path to this script. But what I want this data folder variable to point to is not this, but actually just this folder. I want to point to this entire path up to the data folder. So how do I do that? There's a attribute that you can point to called parents. And, and if you put brackets zero, that's whatever directory this script is in. So that would point to the Python folder. And if I do a one, that'll point to the data folder. So that's what I want. So let's just confirm if I run that and I look at the data folder, you can see indeed I'm pointing to the data folder. So that's what I wanted to do. So now I've programmatically set the variable data folder. So now this will work on anybody's computer if they, you know, take this workspace and they uh, run this script. It'll it'll find the proper path to the data folder. And so let's just convert one of the touchstone files in the data folder, uh, and then we'll uh, graduate to iterating through the directory and converting all of the touchstone files. So if I look in the data folder, you can see there are several touchstone files. One of them is called circuit sim results. Let's use that one. So 
I'm going to use a library that's part of the ADS uh, Python data link. It's called PW Data Tools, which is short for Pathwave Data Tools. And I'm going to import it with a shorter alias, PWDT. The PWDT library has a built-in file translate function, and it can easily translate uh, between any two supported file formats. And so you can easily translate from touchstone to uh, ADS dataset file format, right? So let me go ahead and um, point to the touchstone file that I want to convert. So I'll call that SNP path. The SNP path that I want is the data folder slash and then the name of this file, right? So that's the SNP path. So that in the file translate function, that's the input file path, right? So input file path is SNP path. The output file path will be an output uh, to a data set. And so this doesn't exist yet, but it will. And so what I'll do is I'll call it the same name but just with a, a .ds extension. And I don't need any additional keyword arguments right now. And this will be ds path. So let's run this. So you can see this converted the touchstone file to a data set. So we can go ahead and confirm that if I just here, let me relaunch the ADS data set uh, or data display window. If I look at the circuit sim results, you can see this is what was just created. So this works just like a native ADS data set at this point, right? So we converted that one touchstone file, circuit sim results, S4P, into a native ADS data set. So now let's take that to the next level. Let's go through and iterate through our data folder and convert all of those touchstone files into ADS datasets. So the pathlib library allows you to uh, quickly and easily iterate through um, a directory. And the way you do that is for item in data folder iterdir. Oops. And let me just print each item's name so you can see what this is doing. And I'll go ahead and comment the rest of this out temporarily. Let's just go ahead and show you how the iterdir works. So you can see iterdir, what it's doing is it's iterating through all of the files in the data directory. But it's also iterating through, there's a Python folder, remember? So it's not only iterating through files, it's iterating through other directories. And so as we're converting things, we want to make sure we skip over any directories. Now in your code, you might want to actually descend into a directory and look for touchstone files in those directories as well. But I'm not going to show you how to do that today. But that is possible. So, uh, but in this uh, example, what I'm going to do is just skip over all of the data set files and I'm going to skip over the Python folder and I'm only going to be concerned with any S uh, parameter files, right? And so the way to do that, uh, first I'm going to skip over anything that's a directory. So if item dot is file. So now I'm only going to print uh, the names if it's a file. So now you can see as I'm iterating over my directory, I'm skipping over thing and I'm skipping over any directory. So you can see that the Python is no longer listed here and that Python folder is skipped over. So that helps us skip over the, the folders. 
The next thing I need to do is skip over all of these existing ADS data set files because I don't want to consider those. So the next thing I can do is the uh, Pathwave Data Tools library has a, um, a way to um, determine if a file is a touchstone file. And so the way you do that is you create this thing called a data file. And the data file uh, may or may not exist. And all you have to give it is the path to the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, not the data folder, but the, um, the path to the, to the item. And I can say if data file is touchstone, print the name. And so now you can see I'm skipping over anything that's not a touchstone file. So now I'm finally able to use that same file translate function that I was using before. I can use that on the touchstone files, right? So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncomment these out and I'm going to uh, put this uh, in here and I'm going to And instead of hard coding these paths, what I want to do is programmatically set the um, output path, right? So the output path will be the um, whatever the touchstone file is, we're just going to take it uh, and give it a new extension .ds, right? So the ds path will be so I'm creating a new data file called DS path with a new file extension Oh, and I have to do pwdt dot, right? So uh, just to recap, what I'm doing here is I'm iterating through the directory. I'm checking to see if it's a file. If it is a file, I'm creating something called a data file, which is from the pwdt library, the Pathwave Data Tools library. It's a, it's a data file object. And then that data file object has a, an attribute that checks to see if it's a touchstone file. If it's a touchstone file, then what I'm going to do is create a new data file with which is basically the same as the touchstone file, but with a new extension of .ds. And then I'm going to do file translate where the input file is the data set or the data file, which is the touchstone. And the output will be this new DS file, right? So if I run this, oh, right. So um, that's one um, other thing to keep in mind is since I already converted the circuit sim results, it's complaining and saying that it will not overwrite it because uh, overwrite by default is set to false. So I can either go and delete that you know, data set or I can just set overwrite equals true. And if I do that and run it, you can see it's going through and converting all of these touchstone files to data set files. So if I go into my workspace, you can see now for every single touchstone file, I have a um, corresponding data set file. So that's uh, my brief video. Hopefully you get an idea of how to use this in your work. And um, uh, I'll be creating some more Pathwave data tools videos in the future, so stay tuned. All right, thanks. Take care.